So hello there and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Henry Bakshi and this time we're going to be going over the IBM Watson Natural Language Classifier in Bluemix. So you must be wondering, and actually before I get started, this is a part two to my retrieve and rank video for IBM Watson and you can visit that by the link in the description. It'll probably also be in the related video section. Anyway, getting straight to the point, what is the Natural Language Classifier? Well, simply put, let's say we have two different categories, male and female names. And let's say we give Watson tons of examples of female names and tons of examples of male names. What will happen is if we give it a new name then, after it's done training, a new name that it's never even heard before, it'll estimate if this is probably a male name or probably a female name. This is actually quite interesting. Let me show you a quick demo on the whiteboard. Okay. So now, let's get started and let's create a little uh, t-chart. Here we're going to have girl names and here we're going to have boy names. So now let's just start uh, listing off some girl and boy names uh, like Kathy, There's John, right? Uh, we have stuff like Sarah. We have Peter. We have Lisa. We have um, Robert. Uh, a few more, Samantha, Brandon, we have um, one more, Tracy, and uh, one more, uh, Anna. Uh, for boys, we can have uh, uh, Frank, and we can have Mike. Let me just think of one more name. Okay, got it, but I won't be putting in this. Okay, so now, we have tons of girl names and tons of boy names. Now let's just imagine, I know these are just like one, two, three, four, five, six names for each, but let's just imagine that there were thousands of girl names and thousands of boy names, okay? Now let's imagine that over here on the whiteboard, or actually over here, we have the NLC service. Now this is very interesting. This is one great service over here. This is one of the most advanced IBM Watson services. I would say your retrieval rank sometimes uh, would be more useful than this. But again, that's an entirely separate use case. Natural language classifier over here. What you're going to do, you're going to give it all of this information. Basically, all of this information, we're going to give it the, first of all, training data. as we did for the retrieve and rank. Then what we're going to do is we're also going to give it uh, something to classify or else there's really no point of the service. Uh, and so what's going to happen is once we give it the training data, it's going to start grinding it up and stuff. And what's going to happen is it's going to use machine learning algorithms. And what this will do is, let's say we have these names over here, if we can move over here to the names. This machine learning algorithm will find literally any pattern among these names. It'll look for patterns in between each letter of the names for each name, and the patterns that match with each other among the entire data set will be used as pattern matching to see if something that you try to classify should be girl or boy. Again, if I put this in a bit more simple way, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to find 
uh, it's going to make a set of rules, basically, a set of computer rules, uh, so that it can determine later whether something is a girl name or a boy name. Because a, a human, it can't. You can't really start at a computer and say, you know what? Let's start writing so many conditionals to see, okay, is this a girl name? Okay, it has to have these, 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 these letters in order to have be a girl name, these, 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 these letters to be a boy name. You can't do that. It's very, very hard to make conditionals manually. So we just let the computer do that work by making a machine learning algorithm such as Natural Language Classifier does, uh, and it finds patterns between the data by itself, and then creates a set of rules. So now, we're going to give it a name that it has not even heard before. Let's give it something like uh, Kelly, for example. Now again, remember, as with everything, it won't always get it right. Sometimes, and this is very, very sometimes, because I've mostly always had success with the IBM Watson uh, Natural Language Classifier service, just once in a while that it just glitches out. But, uh, now we're going to come over here. Now let's see what it outputs. What it's going to do is it's going to see, hmm, there are only girl and boy classes. So it's going to say, I think it is so-and-so, let's just say, for example, this isn't real data, but let's just say it's 90% sure that it's a girl name. And let's just say it's 15% sure Oh, sorry. Anyway, it's 15% sure that it's a boy name. So as you can see, it says it's pr Kelly is probably a girl name. And so it ranks that first, and then we are able to say, you know what, we're 90% sure that this is a girl uh, name. Now let's just uh, try changing Kelly to something like, uh, I don't know, um... Bill. Now what's going to happen is the service is going to again give us output, but let's just say this time it's 95% um, sure that it's a boy name and pretty unsure, like 5% sure, unsure. 5% uh, sure that it's a girl name. As you can see, it's ranking boy above girl because it thinks, you know what, with the patterns that we have, it's probably a boy name. Uh, and so, as you can see, that's how it does that. Okay, so that was a quick example, but, you know, this is sort of boring. I mean, why would you want to know, why would you want a computer program that can tell the difference between a boy and a girl name? I mean, sometimes it could be a bit practical, but not fun. So what I'm going to do in order to solve that, instead of creating a name classifier, we're going to create a movie rating classifier. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be downloading uh, around 15,000 movies from IMDb. Yeah, that's a lot, but that's actually very little compared to what we're actually going to be doing. We're going to be downloading their ratings. We're going to round the ratings. Uh, then in a CSV file, we're going to put the ratings, I mean the movie name and the rating. Uh, then we're going to feed that into Watson, and so when you enter new name that it hasn't even heard before of a movie, it should be able to tell you it's around uh, this much percent sure that it is this rating, and it usually gets it quite right. Uh, it doesn't always get it spot on, of course, because it's rounded, uh, but it will get it uh, quite right, not to the decimal, but to the uh, proper number uh, place. So anyway, now let's get to the Mac part so I can show you how to put this into a Watson Bluemix application. Uh, and so let's get to the Mac part now. So welcome back to the Mac part. Now I'm going to be showing you how you can actually use the natural language classifier. So to get started, let's go to Bluemix uh, and let's open up the catalog. See what's uh, happening there. Seems like my Wi-Fi isn't too good today. Anyway, so now let's uh, go to Watson. As you can see, I'm just going to click on this little Watson service over here. Uh, then oh, over here we see Natural Language Classifier. Okay, so now let's click on this. 
Perfect, and now let's create the service look just like we did for Retriever Rank in our last video. Okay, perfect. Now while that happens, let's go to Google and search up the Retrieve and Rank documentation, uh, and this is where we get, or not Retrieve and Rank, sorry, Natural Language Classifier, uh, and so this is where we get. Uh, there will be a link to this in the description. I yeah, so there will be a link to this in the description, uh, so you don't need to search for it. But once you are done creating your service over here in Bluemix, all we're going to do is click on Service Credentials over here, and take your password, copy them, and then I wonder where Sublime Text goes when you need it. Uh, okay. Create new file. Okay, perfect. So paste in the username. Uh, let's also paste in our password. Perfect. Now, let's start with the quick start guide. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our documentation. We've already gotten our service credentials, so what we're going to be doing is, in stage two, we're going to be preparing our training data. Now, I've already prepared the training data for you, uh, and so this is a gigantic list of around 15 thousand yeah 15,000 different um, uh, movies and if I open this up with Excel so it's movies and their ratings so over here as you can see God that is a lot so now if I just scroll down here just a second yeah by the way these um, e these uh, movies are from IMDB in case you were wondering. Uh, and so I had to extract them from the very, very difficult to use and parse, actually specifically, um, uh, text files. So as you can see, uh, there are exactly 14,996 of these movies and their ratings. So now what's going to happen is Watson will be able to estimate another rating um, using these uh, and pattern matching. So, oh yeah, uh, again, you can only have up to 15,000 records in the examples. You cannot have more than that, I believe. Uh, that's what I read last in the documentation. Okay, so, now, oh, oh yeah, and one more thing. Uh, I only have these from, I think, one, yeah, one to C, because I don't know how to randomly choose movies from all the different letters. I just got from one to C, but still, it doesn't really matter. It works. Okay, so now, uh, next, let's go to the next step since we already have our training data. Uh, and you can see this little uh, terminal command over here, this CURL, or as I just say, curl command. Uh, copy it, go over to Sublime Text, paste it in. Now, actually there was a take of this video before this one, which you probably won't see. But uh, in it, I actually made a slight error. Uh, basically... You're supposed to delete this part of the command and make the path to your um, uh, training data. Uh, so if I do this. Uh, now the thing is, what happened? After that I had to cut and then stuff because there was an error. And I just realized I forgot to put this little at the right thing there. Yeah, so make sure you don't forget to put that in. So then I'm going to copy my username, paste it in, my password, paste it in. Perfect. So now that I have my username, password, and everything filled out here, I'm just going to name this tutorial classifier anyway, just keep it the default. Uh, and so while we're going to copy this uh, command, again, I would recommend that you watch my Retrieve and Rank tutorial before this one because then you'll uh, sort of know what the uh, sort of, uh, you know, um, uh, way we're doing, the format of this is. So right now what I'm doing is I'm following the guide that uh, IBM gives us in general. Uh, I'm also modifying the commands so that they actually fit our needs. Okay, so again... Here you need to put in the path uh, to your the training data file. Uh, you put your credentials over here, and then you're set. So now, in order to execute the command, we just paste it into terminal. Click the enter button. Now, theoretically, what should happen? It should say, 
Uh, okay, so that was not supposed to happen. If I just go to Stack Overflow really quick, um, roof malformed. Uh, where's the little command? Yeah, thanks to um, Palantir, I guess. Uh, so for this command, so I'm just going to run this command on the training data itself. Um, training these. You won't need to do this. It's just I that need to do this. I'm going to move this into. Okay, perfect. So now what happened uh, is. Uh, in my training data, there was a malformed UTF-8 sequence over here, as you can see. Uh, and so what's going to happen is I'm going to run a command that will remove all those uh, malformed UTF-8 character, UTF characters. Uh, and now I'm going to just... Uh, uh, I have already done it. So now let's run the Watson command with the new training data. Okay, perfect, it worked. Now the classifier is in its training phase and it's not yet ready to accept classifier requests. So essentially what's happening now is the Watson instance is training. It's taking those 15,000 movies and their ratings and it's training itself to recognize more movies and their ratings and it's finding patterns between the ratings uh, and the uh, letters in between uh, the uh, uh, specific uh, the names of the movies and so it's just going to do tons of pattern matching machine learning etc etc uh, and so essentially what, what our goal is is at the end of this when we're done everything when it's done training uh, we should be able to enter in a movie like Home Alone 3 uh, that it's never even heard before it, as I said it's only from 1 to C 1 A B C hasn't even heard of Home Alone before so if we enter in the name of the movie, it should be able to tell us uh, an estimated rank of what the movie should be rated on IMDb. Uh, so that's going to be great uh, once that's done, but uh, bad news. But before that, we should just get on with this. So if I copy the next command in step 3 uh, into Sublime Text, fill in the username and password, Uh, then over here, if you see in terminal, we have a classifier ID. So if I copy that and paste it over here in the second command, I remove that. Then if I copy the second command from Sublime Text into terminal, yeah, bad news. This will take a long, long time to train. And by long time, I mean I'm going to have to keep this running overnight and come back by tomorrow because this thing will take hours upon hours to train because it's a gigantic data set. Anyway, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the recording. Uh, I'm going to wait uh, overnight. I'm just going to sleep now, I guess, uh, maybe upload this video. Uh, then tomorrow I'm going to be back with part two uh, in which I will show you the trained classifier. Then we're going to be classifying some text. Uh, and see how that works. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel, like the video, comment down below, email me at tajimani at gmail.com, or tweet me at tajimani if you have any questions, suggestions, concerns, etc. And that's going to be it for this tutorial. Goodbye.